welcome by another video of the Argus Saga. And today uh, we, I have a, uh, well actually we have a care collaboration for you guys. And this time we're going to talk about the beautiful Vanoliopsis sis. Because there are quite a lot. But, um, and I have um, a few of them. As you can see I have around 55 now I think. And I have this wall of Phenoliopsis. That is something that I always wanted to have if I ever had a chance. And now uh, I have, because I have this beautiful greenhouse and I uh, gave them their own wall. And uh, so yeah, like I said, today it's a care collaboration and uh, we're going to talk about this beautiful Argot. And before I go over the details uh, of the care that I give my Phenoliopsis, and I want to stretch it out, this is just a, a care uh, that I give them and I'm not saying that this uh, is it, this is it, how to grow them, how to bloom them, just um, remember that always if you watch the videos. But uh, before I gonna go into all those inf that information, I uh, like to share with you guys uh, the other uh, people who are uh, giving their care uh, videos, making their care videos and giving their care information today as well. First of all, we have um, Trish, Argot and uh, Plant Life. Then we have Honeybees and Argots. He's the one who uh, put this uh, one, uh, this care collaboration uh, together. So thank you for uh, inviting me for uh, joining in this care collaboration, um, Michael from Honeybees and Argots. I really appreciate it. The third one is uh, Fernanda Nascimento, Argots and Succulents. And uh, then we have Simply Argots, etc. And the follow one is Ninja Argots. And Ninja is uh, Nina from Ninja Argots, is the one who uh, invented these care collaborations. Once again, a big thank you because I really, really enjoy them. And then the next one is Justin Argot and more. Then we have What's Up Argots. And the follow one is Denny's Argus Journey. And the last one on the list is Cloud Forest Vibes Argus and more. So those are the ones, the growers, all spread over the world. Uh, I think that's a beautiful thing. We do get these character collaborations in uh, quite some different um, areas around the world so thereby around the world so thereby we uh, get also care uh, care guides for uh, different climates and i think that is also a uh, beautiful thing of the of these uh, care, care collaborations okay so um those are the ones who are also joined in in this uh, care collaboration like i said um well first of all uh, as you uh, saw and may already have noticed, I grow my Argots in a greenhouse. This one is um, kind of shaded. I have bubble plastic uh, still on the roof there. It's um, basically meant for keeping the heat in, in winter, but also it gives a bit of shade, a bit of filtered li uh, light. Um, and on the uh, outside I have some chalk paint. If you want to know more about it, then I have a video uh, about that. And if I don't f um, forget, I will have a link now. You can see it. Uh, I go more into that uh, chalk paint and how apply how I applied it um, at this greenhouse. So we have beautiful light for them. Um, also, I have my uh, greenhouse is faced uh, south southwest, so thereby I get quite a lot of sunlight in here. That is, that is basically a plus, but the downside is that I really have to watch if they don't burn, if they, they uh, do, not, do not get uh, burnt leaves. And also it gives me quite a high temperature. You can imagine if you um, are in the sun for, well, it, I think it starts around, yeah, I think around 11... Uh, yeah, around 10, 11 in the morning, and it goes all the way around, 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 and I think about 6 o'clock in the evening, I uh, the sun will go down behind that wall. Um, 
basically of course but uh, you get the point so therefore um, yeah quite a lot of sunlight and that is something I um, yeah I have to face and have to deal with this summer I this greenhouse is um, built last year so I have it uh, last year in November if I'm correctly so I have it for a few months this is actually going to be my first summer growing my orchids in this greenhouse so therefore I'm not completely sure if I have enough shaded um, shaded chalk or uh, on my roof or probably I need a shade netting um, I think it's okay now it's a kind of a dull day a day uh, today while I'm filming but when if the Sun is out it's not incredibly strong I touch the leaves and especially the ones who are growing um, closest to the roof I really touch those leaves if they don't get warm and I really try to watch it. What you also can do is to, to basically test a little bit the light levels is put your hand above the leaves, something like this, depending where the light comes from, so obviously, and check the, sh the shadow. You can see I now have quite a, a strong shadow on the leaf from my finger. The stronger the shadow, the stronger the light. So the, the, the more visible the shadow is of, that, of my finger, for example, of my hand the stronger the light above is. So that's a bit of an indication there as well. Those two uh, factors were for me quite uh, quite easy and handy to use and to really check. Um, the shadow method, <laughs> if I can put it like that, is uh, quite, um, gives you an indication, but especially uh, if the leaves get warm. If they really get hot, you need to do something and quickly. Trust me, they burn, can burn quite quickly if they don't use to that much sunlight or growing light. If you have them too close to the grow lights, they, they, uh, they burn and they can burn quite easily. But as far as I can see now from here, most of the colors of the leaves are um, I like. Um, the, uh, the little bit brighter green we have here and there from new uh, leaves. And here and here that is uh, the green color that I like and for example this one this these guys do get a little bit brighter before I had them in the home I had did, didn't sorry I didn't give them uh, as much light as they receive here but I think this is a good color for a family upstairs don't mind this leaf this is an older leaf but uh, these guys are the newer ones and also this one beautiful I think it's a little bit uh, it has a uh, shine on it so I think it's uh, yeah and it feels very thick quite thick that's also an indication it's not not really an indication for the amount of light but more for the feeding so I think that is a nice uh, opportunity to start to talk about feeding I do not feed them too much I in in generally as uh, generally speaking I do not give my orchids a lot of feed I feed them and but uh, what I am um, I'm a believer of giving them as much uh, variety as you can uh, within reasons of course so it uh, needs to be suited for orchids but let's say my general my basic feed is the MSU formula and uh, I add stuff in for example and this one is very important um, well, I, I'm gonna go, grab the, the bottles. It makes it a little bit easier to talk about. So be right back. Yeah, I think this is a little bit easier to talk about the feeding. So we can see actually what I'm talking about. Well, first of all, this is the uh, MSU formula. MSU formula, sorry. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's a 13315 fertilizer. Just a basic fertilizer. It's a very good fertilizer. I it, Basically everything is in here where you need to grow your orchids. I like to experiment with other stuff you see in the background here. I will talk about that in a minute. But if you are, especially when you are a beginner, I think you should um, buy a, a fertilizer or a, a very good quality fertilizer which has basically everything in it. I think there are a lot of videos out here discussing the fertilizer so you can, uh, can watch some of those videos I think and try to decide which one suits you the best. Once again, uh, a climate is very important. So therefore, uh, once again, these character collaborations are very important. Maybe this fertilizer wouldn't suit you as well 
as because you are living in a completely different country with a different weather, etc. I'm uh, from the Netherlands, and we um, do not get very, very extreme cold weather most of the times, and not very extreme warm, warm weather. Quite often, it's um, yeah, quite damp. It's uh, it's quite rainy most of the times out here. But um, yeah, this one uh, works very well for for that matter. Um, so I have this as a base. This product I use for a eight months now. I think I'm I'm yeah I'm really really happy with this product. I see so much difference when I started using this Calmac from Biobiz. This is a brand that I really really enjoy. So therefore, you see. The other fertilizers also from the same brand, but this one, the Calmac, is really fantastic. If you apply it quite, a, yeah, quite correctly, you will get this beautiful shiny leaves, but also strong. You can feel it. You can tap it, and they are strong. They do not bend, not not much, just a little bit. If I bend even further, they will break. Whoops. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry you guys, they get, that did uh, go a spray bottle, I will clean it up later. Okay, but um, yeah, you can uh, really feel uh, the sturdiness of the leaves. And the calcium is a very important factor for that, to get, uh, get really strong orchids. <laughs> and uh, it's really, it, it's the case, I can really see and feel the difference. It's beautiful, I really like doing this so so much different you yeah i think you have to feel it once you felt it you know basically you you know absol absolutely what i'm talking about so the uh the calcium this is just a brand i personally really like there are more different brands out there you can uh, can use obviously then we have um the uh, alga mic says it on the label this is uh, basically a seaweed they call it alga mic also a very great product both of them are a big fan of both of them this one really helps gives the plant hormones and really helps plants uh, especially with roots activity don't overdo it i always give them a little bit of it just a few ppms per watering let's say five or probably ten i don't need more just every watering just a little bit and uh, it will help to, uh, like I said, to let them uh, grow beautiful uh, roots, they shoot uh, out new roots um, quicker in my experience, more and quicker and stronger as well. And especially um, for orchids that I am transitioning in um, this self-watering setup. I, uh, most of the orchids, well, every orchid I buy or get is uh, potted in something uh, inorganic i grow inorganic i will uh, talk about it uh, more as well but if you uh, get your orchids in a completely different setup they have a period of time they need to get adjusted to uh, that new setup most of the times that means that they need a completely different root system um, not always but in most cases they just need new roots to adapt to that system i also have uh, actually for a four part video talking about how i transfer my plants into same uh, self watering basically also in semi hydroponics to get them uh, started uh, making roots and thereby adapted to their new system i will uh, link those videos as well so you can uh, check that if you like then we have the bio heaven and the activera those products are quite new for me this one uh, is basically, um, yeah, you can compare with the uh, uh, Hamid Axis. How? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know how it's called. Hum Volvine Extract. This is basically the same product. Um, what it does is that this stuff. Um, basically puts a sort of layer around the feeding if I'm correct I'm not an expert on this but I saw some um, tutorials some videos uh, from them directly from Biobiz and you can look it up uh, bio heaven and you will get those uh, videos as well but they um, basically make the feed a little bit um, 
more tasteful for the plants. That's basically what they do. So the plants uh, are taking up more feed and more complete uh, feeding um, schedule actually. You, they will get more feed in there. Um, I like to use that product. I like the idea of that. But I must admit, I don't use it too much because I also am a quite a big believer that the plants do know what they need. I think uh, nature is so beautiful and th thought of everything. So why would I, why do I think that I need a product like this to let my plants eat something that they maybe didn't need or didn't get, I should say, didn't eat without that product. You know what I mean? So it's hard to explain, but I don't want to mess with it too much. I like them a little bit bigger than they would grow in, um, in nature, probably a little bit more blooms, but I will not overdo it. So therefore I'm, I'm very cautious uh, on which products I use. I don't want to overdo it. But if I can make it a little bit easier for them, like uh, Calmac, I'm a big fan. I can see it, the plants, um, they need those hormones, so I give them a little bit extra so they can settle in the pot. Once they do that, I just give them uh, way less of this, because they don't need it as much anymore. Same goes for these, this uh, product. Like I said, it makes it a little bit more tasteful for them. Okay, I like to try that, but that's it. I will not overdo it uh, because I, I really believe in the plants themselves. I never want to lose that feeling. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Okay, and then we have the last bottle. It's called the Activera. This is based on the aloe vera plant and all his uh, healthy abilities. Uh, they try to put in a bottle so we can give it uh, to our plants and uh, I also did a watch and did search for some information about this product obviously and there's one thing that really stood out for me and that is why I wanted to try this is uh, that this has the ability to with the micronutrients to um, transfer that that roots rotting roots in the pot into sugars that then can uptake the plant again. So if you think about that, and if you go a little bit back in this um, care collab that I'm making, I was talking about uh, giving this algamic to plants to get them started making new roots in a new setup. And before that I was um, explained that uh, most plants that I get in are uh, grown in organic media. I grow in inorganic media. So they need to uh, have new roots. Most of the roots will die off. Not all of them, but most of them uh, will die off. I talked about that. And then we go back to this product. Activera. If it does what they say, if it uh, makes rotting materials, rotting roots, obtakable again for uh, your plants, sugars, they said it, uh, they make sugars for your plants again, well, I think that is very suited and very helpful. Uh, so therefore, I'm trying out this product. I'm really interested in um, if I ever can see some difference. And I think that's a good question. I try to uh, find an answer uh, on that question someday. I probably will, will not 100%. It's very difficult to say which products really help and which don't. Um, yeah, we can say, so, for example, I did notice quite a bit of difference with the Calmac, um, with also with the uh, seaweed extract, the Algamic, um, but, but the, with the Activera, yeah, maybe I see um, when I do my uh, three monthly update on the reservoirs, I watch the roots, maybe I see only the, the strength of the, of the roots, and no more uh, development. The rotting development should be gone at some point, I think. I'm not sure about it. Something I uh, really wanted to try out. But that is the uh, thought uh, behind the Activera. That would be uh, could be very useful if it, do if it does what it what they say. 
Um, so, yeah. So therefore, I uh, try to get, get a cycle going on. If you are um, here on my channel uh, for a few months, you may have noticed my uh, video that I made. And I also will link that because I think it's quite... Uh, they're all... Um, the ones that I link are very important to understand my growing um, habit here, I think, for my plants. Um, of my way of growing, just uh, how you want to put it. But um, I um, try, I'm not flushing my plants a lot. I am growing um, self watering, so I have a outer pot. Uh, like this one, for example, with a inner pot. And I will uh, add a water meter, something like that. This gives me the uh, let me know how much water is in the reservoir. So if it's very low, I know this plant needs watering. That's very easy if you have 200 and probably 80 plants. <laughs> it's quite uh, easy to have uh, quite a lot of um, stuff that will help you to make it a little bit easier. Uh, like for example this one, this one has water as well, it's blooming, I do not need to do anything about this plan. But yeah, like I said, I try to, um, I'm not flushing, I have water in here. Every three months I will take notes of the PPM, uh, yeah, PPM and pH of the water. What happens uh, most of the times, if you don't flush, in my experience is that the pH uh, goes down. It go, doesn't go upwards, as most of people uh, most people talk about when you grow inorga uh, inorganic with leca, pomace, and etc. But it will go down. And uh, once again, I will uh, link that video. I go more into detail uh, into the into it in that video. But so therefore, I check my uh, my my uh, pH uh, and ppms every three months. Thereby, I do not have any build-ups anymore, because if the PPM is too high, I, I will flush it then. If it doesn't, um, if it's not high, uh, too high for my, um, for my liking, not too high is, um, 200 is the limit. Everything underneath 200 is okay. If it's over 200, I will flush it. And then I'm going to check it again. If it's still too high, I will soak it and flush it again. Uh, just as long as it takes for me to get that PPM down in those reservoirs of all my orchids, of course. Um, so therefore, um, yeah, I do an update. I check all my parts every three months and in between I do not flush it. And therefore, uh, like I said, I'm very interested to, give, to get a sort of little climate, bioclimate, how do you want to call it, <laughs> inside of those pots. And once again, therefore, I try to find products that will help me uh, get rid of uh, rotting materials, for example, um, and, and give feed, obviously, for the argot itself. And also, I use a... Um, is this the product? No, wrong one. It's the other. A, uh, I use this product. Um, it's a chalk-based, uh, calcium, sorry, calcium-based uh, product with some magnesium and that will uh, bring up the pH again so uh, like I said I will explain that more in uh, in the other video but this is basically what I'm trying to do with a reservoir I try to keep it going without flushing this is uh, also a product this uh, that I s on occasionally use this is nitrogen for the ones from the Netherlands or Belgium stick stuff <laughs> but um, this is a, um, it's a it's a good brand it, but it's very very strong so I only use a, f a teeny tiny bit if I want to pump up the nitrogen um, for the plants and I will do that if they are uh, more in the growing habit but I will not pump it up too much but uh, I will give them every well let's say two months I think a little bit of extra of nitrogen I'm very careful uh, about it to every two months is not much. I know just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want small uh, Thin leaves. I just want a good uh, growing leaves, but I want the thickness as well the beautiful color This is a very very big leaf as you can see So in combination with the other products the nitrogen and especially the Calmac um, You uh, may uh, if you do it correct you get uh, beautiful and 
probably a bit bigger leaves than the year before. That is my uh, my goal, and obviously I always hope that they will bloom very beautifully like this one. It's a very beautiful cascade. This one, this particular one, I uh, showed the leaf off, but it has a very beautiful spike, and it's quite a long spike. If you ask me, it's not 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 ridiculously long, but I have to admit, when they when I grow them uh, indoors. I did get shorter spikes and now they do get start to get bigger I think because uh, everything is more balanced the feeding schedule I have going on is better suited for them but uh, especially the light the light is a very important factor they need to light the light to grow so if you have a very beautiful feeding schedule going on but you do not have the light it doesn't make much sense you can feed them, but they really need to feed, otherwise you overfeed them. You give them way too much things that they don't use at the moment because of other situations. In this case, uh, I was referring to a light situation. Um, but um, yeah, I think it does kind of make sense. You should give them what they, what they need. Okay, I'm now going to show you a few plants who are uh, potted in... Um, my watering cell watering system just to let you see what I use as a medium. So I did uh, grab two examples here. Um, just start off with the uh, one on the left. As you uh, can see, I grow this in a Lekka. Um, this is a uh, orchid that I have a quite a bit longer than the rest because I switched over to uh, pumice. I barely do use uh, lacquer anymore. I may add some lacquer beans in with the with the pumice, but I mainly now grow in pumice. I will explain in a minute why. But first of all, let's have a look in the uh, in the pots. As you can see, this one has quite a lot of roots. It's really taking the pot, and we have some roots coming from the bottom. Well, actually, one, as you can see. So it's not some, it's just one. So I have it in a inner pot, a plastic pot. I like the trans. I'm sorry, it's a bit windy today. The transparent pots um, the most because I can uh, see the roots, and I really like to enjoy. Not <laughs> I really enjoy watching my roots and see how they grow. And I have an aerial root now stuck under the pot. Whoops! Here it is. Um, but yeah, I, I really like the uh, clear pots, transparent pots for that um, matter. What I li also like to do is put some aerial roots back in the pot. I like to have more roots in the pot uh, than aerial roots, and especially ones who have some aerial roots. Don't get me wrong, I like the aerial as well, but I try to keep um, some roots in the pot as well. This is my outer pot, and this is the reservoir that I talked about. As you can see, it's not that clean it doesn't matter it much because I keep an eye on it and if it goes over 200 ppm I will change the water but this is basically the setup and I have a water meter and I can demonstrate how that works if you're not familiar with these things but these are my really lifesavers for me because I have so many outlets it saves me quite a lot of checking if they need water or not whoops there you go, I have to do this with one hand, but there it is. And you probably saw that red sticky plastic thing going up. That means that this one is um, it's quite full, it's uh, over the max, but it's hanging in an angle. But um, yeah, this one has uh, water enough. So let's put it, this one back in its place, so we have a little bit more room. This one is living over here. And I have burn some holes in there and put some hooks in it so I can put it on this uh, panel and thereby I have my orchids hanging like I said on a wall and I like them to grow out of the pot sideways they are epiphytes epiphytic plants so they uh, like to grow on uh, trees and I like to mimic that in my uh, grow um, growing area in my greenhouse and what you also get is that they have these uh, pendant flower spikes 
which I personally really like. I don't stake them, I just let them, uh, let them grow as the orchid wants. This one grew, grew a little bit more sideways. There's the light most of the times coming from, so therefore it did go that way. And then the bloom started opening and it did go a little bit downwards because the blooms are quite heavy. But I like the effect the uh, you will get. So therefore I have some who try to grow up towards the light again, but I uh, left, leave them hanging over the edge of the pot, as you can see as this one does as well. We have more orchid over the pot, um, uh, hanging over the pot, and I uh, like I said I like that, but you can imagine if sellers would try to uh, transport a lot of Phenoliopsis like this, this will take up way too much room. So therefore you see most of the time them straight up in the pot. Then they put some plastic on it so the leaves will uh, go upwards. And if they are um, packed like that, they uh, do not take up as much, as much space. So therefore that's the main reason. It's not that the orchid likes to grow upright. Oops. But... Um, uh, because they, they are most of the time hanging on trees, but it's just what we do, or well, actually not we, but the sellers do, uh, to um, have more space uh, when they transport uh, over hundred or thousands uh, plants. Well, you can imagine that that uh, takes up quite some uh, some space. Um, let's try to get it out of its pots. Oops. Uh, I have to put the camera camera down. This is too heavy for one hand. Just give me a second. And there we go. And now I have my hand around the pot so I can show it better to you guys. But you see here I have some lacquer in there. But the other lighter stones are pumice. And I really, really like pumice. I did explain that in another video as well. One of those, uh, how I transfer my orchids into um, self-watering. The first one I talk about the media that I use as well. So if you want to know more about that, please check that video. But um, yeah, I li really like the pumice and this uh, orchid likes it as well. Oops, we have a lot of roots coming out of the pot. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. The downside is that I cannot put it down on the table. I will break the roots. So therefore, um, yeah, I need to keep it in my hand. And we have beautiful aerial roots. And yeah, we have one root that is dark there. That is uh, probably an older root that is dying off now. That's okay. That is one root that I can follow and see if the active, ac yeah, Activera, the product I talked earlier about, does its job. Because it should take care of that root, I think. I'm not sure. But anyhow, this one is uh, growing uh, wonderfully well as well, and they like the setup. I have to put the camera down again, because otherwise I have, I will break those aerial roots, so I will be back in a second again. And it's back in its spot. This one as well has beautiful, nice, healthy leaves. This one is very sturdy, very hard. Maybe you can hear it. <laughs> Thick leaves. Beautiful bloom. One of my favorites. Um, for those who are interested in this one, this is... Officially it's no idea, but I think it's the Fel KS Sweet Diamond Morocco. I think that is the one. Beautiful, beautiful plant. And still some roots to come. And I this one has a little basil cakey that I leave on. It may fill the pot up with keikis, I would be happy with that, but um, yeah. So this is a little bit more um, insight on the system, the self-watering pots that I use. And a little bit information about the phenoliopsis. Well, first of all, um, I probably have one or two. Well, um, I know I have one. This one is the Gigantica, Phenoliopsis Gigantica. And that should be a species, if I'm correct, but the rest are probably all hybrids. I have, I'm not completely sure, but I'm, I'm looking around if I can find a species. Fenleops, um, no, and no, the only one is the Digentica, like I said, the other ones are all crushes, uh, so hi thereby hybridized, hybridized with, um, by, by um, people, so yeah. 
though I don't have um, any species. But what I do have is some summer bloomers. Most of the time the summer bloomers do have a bit of a lighter color uh, on those leaves. This is a mini fell. I'm not completely sure. It's not really a um, summer bloomer, if I'm correct. The rest is. This one is, that one, this is the Leodora, beautiful plant. If you ask me, a must-have, because the fragrance is fantastic. And those four are as well, summer bloomers. But like I said, most of the times you can recognize them on their, their bit different uh, rounded shape leaves, most of the time, generally speaking, and they have a lighter color. They uh, also are very like to bloom. This is the Leodoro up close. Uh, of course, they like to bloom, but with the hybrids, you get you do most of the time get more blooms at, uh, on one spike. Most summer bloomers are fragrant as well, in my experience, and some of the hybrids. But but I uh, and the hybrids are the supermarket fails, I could call them. Most of them are not fragrant. They are beautiful. I really, really, yeah, I'm a big fan of Phenoleopsis, but um, most of them are not fragrant. I was lucky, this one is uh, has a fragrant on it and has a little bit of malted leaves, a little bit of spots on there, which I uh, do enjoy as well. And But for the rest, yeah, this one is also a, a fragrant one, and the one that I showed you who is growing in and the Leca beans is also a uh, fragrant fell but these guys for example and this one and this purple pink one are all not fragrant beautiful but not fragrant this one is who is now almost finished blooming this one is also fragrant so it's just uh, being lucky but this one is going over now I don't know if it I'm not sure, I don't think it will uh, rebloom on this, maybe there, but anyhow, it had quite a lot of blooms and those ones were fragrant. One spike. So they have a few um, blooms. This one has three in uh, at the moment. And the rest are, for me, first time bloomers are rebloomers, so I don't have much summer fells. And like I said, um, I don't have this greenhouse for that long, so def before I had... Um, I think only the Leodoran, um, yeah, no other summer bloomers in the house, so therefore I do not have much experience with them, but they uh, get the same care as the uh, hybrids you find in supermarkets, garden centers, uh, etc. They do get the same care, but they like to have a little bit more light, so therefore they are closer to uh, the light. The light is coming from there and from above, of course, but they, they get the most light of all the fells that I have here. Most of the time, yeah, I don't... Yeah, considering it, the sun is a little bit uh, shining now, but yeah, it's not much difference. They, so basically they get the same care. And they really like it. I really like those big leaves. Beautiful. This one has a, they get a big, very big leaf as well, as you can see. And I know they can even get bigger. I hope they will. This is also a, a quite a big uh, and very sturdy leaves. If you can compare them with this one, they're a little bit soft to the touch. Not dehydrated soft, <laughs> if you know what I mean, but a little bit softer. This one is very sturdy. And I must admit, I learned a lot about the calcium from uh, Rick Els, and I really miss him on YouTube. YouTube and I can only hope that he is doing well but he is the uh, the calcium man the nutrient man if you ask me yeah I really did learn a lot of that uh, that grower if you don't familiar with him you should have look uh, look him up he is explaining the nutrients and the balance between the nutrients so so beautifully but um yeah so I think we covered uh, everything for now I hope you enjoyed it, and as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, for now, I just, I just want to say thank you very much for being here on my channel. If you not have already, please subscribe, it would really help me out, I really uh, would enjoy it. And um, yeah, thank you for watching, hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye bye!